In this video, I will demonstrate the importance of mesh preparation for ZBrush and how it can ensure the best result for evenly distributed detail throughout your sculpting process, as well as when to smooth or not to smooth when subdividing meshes in ZBrush. Additionally, the power of edge creasing and how it can be set up within 3ds Max or Maya and then transferred into ZBrush to enhance your mesh creation speed and quality will be covered. Before I start working on the shield, I want to show you some of the workflow that I'll be doing in the shield creation and why I choose not to chamfer edges when I'm preparing something for ZBrush. So this is a really good example. We're just going to take two simple um, cube shapes, one with no chamfers, one with chamfers, and sculpt on them. So here's the same thing in uh, ZBrush, and you can see we have the two different subtools. So the first one is our chamfered edge, and I'm just going to go ahead and divide that a few times. And obviously, since we had the chamfered edge, you know, we get some nice uh, tight edges around here that feel pretty good. Now let's select our um, non-chamfered edge. And if I divide this, you can see it loses its shape. So obviously, we don't want that. And I want to show you a way that you can still subdivide and kind of get the shape coming from here, which will give you a better base topology. So I'm going to undo those. And then underneath, geometry for division. Under here by default smooth is always on. Turn that off and then you can divide and now we're actually getting our subdivisions which you can see it's increasing up here. However we're it's just subdividing along here and not smoothing out anything along the edge. So let's try smooth now and then again and maybe one more time. So now we have something that feels somewhat similar to our chamfered edge but the thing that's interesting is we're gonna have a really nice underlying topology which will get some really good sculpting results for us in the end. So let's just compare those two. So for example, I'm just gonna change to our clay brush or clay buildup. This would be a good one to illustrate what's going on. So if we come in here, uh, you can see that it feels like the distribution of the polygons is really nice as you go through the entire mesh. It doesn't feel like anything's out of whack here. So now if we come in here and we start to sculpt, You can see down here that we start to lose a little bit of tessellation as we get to the edge. So because it's so dense right here, look how many polygons you can get and then as you come down here, see how blocky the edges get? But then when you're close here again on the edge, it's nice and dense topology and then down here, your edges get less topology. So you know, under the hood, you may not be too concerned about that. Usually you can subdivide as much as you need whenever you're in a program in order to just make it feel smooth everywhere. But by doing what we did with the asset over here where we're not chamfering the edge and instead we're just keeping it very even, we're doing some subdivisions without smooth turn turned on, uh, the topology underneath stays the same and is distributed really nice throughout the entire piece. So as you're sculpting, um, you'll have that same density the entire way through. And as you get into more and more complex detailed ZBrush sculpts, it's nice to have that because sometimes it can be really hard to get the amount of detail that you need on a face if all the polygons are being added to these dense chamfered areas. So that's why I do this all the time. The other thing is, is in a professional work environment, sometimes these chamfered edges, as you start to sculpt and work on them, uh, if you're working in a program like um, V-Ray or RenderMan where you're extracting displacement maps that render at this uh, or displace at render time sometimes you can get some weird kind of pinching and interpenetration on the edges where things like that occur so that's one way to do it turning off the smooth but what happens if you have an object that looks like this so in a case like this you can't simply like if we were to go in and start subdividing that and uh, zbrush without a smooth turned on you're inevitably going to get some fastening on here now this one's not too bad because i already have some subdivisions but what I'll do is I'll actually remove a couple of these lines and edges so you can see a good illustration of what will happen. Okay, behind the scenes I just did a quick polygon reduction of the various edges on here. So for example, if we added a turbo smooth on here, you know, we could uh, get rid of some of this fastening on the side. So let me show you how this is different, like something with straight edges is different than something with a curved edge if you want to use this uh, subdivision workflow in ZBrush. So here's our asset, and remember, um, by default, it's gonna smooth if you do this, which obviously we don't want this to happen. But if we're to turn off this smooth in a shape like this, and we divide a couple times, now we turn smooth back on. Now the problem is, like one, we, do get, we still get the evenly distributed topology, but the problem is, is now because we did the subdivisions when it had that uh, sharp edge in here, 
and no creasing that you still retain that polygonal shape in here. So let's undo those and then what I'm going to show you is by adding edge creasing how you can fix that. So back in Max, what we can do if we go to our edge mode on this asset, let's just select all of our edges that we want to have creasing and in my case I, I want to crease everything that is on the border. And you can actually do this within ZBrush as well, but um, since I'm using these programs, I like to set it up in Max or even in Maya, and I'll show you how you can do it in Maya in a minute and one of the advantages that has. But if you just go down here to where you see Crease, um, by default, this is set to zero. Set it to one, which is the maximum uh, amount you can do, and that makes this sharp. Now, for example, if we add a Turbo Smooth on this now, uh, we add a couple iterations, you can see that it's uh, smoothing nicely along the edge but it's also, or sorry, on the sides, but it's also keeping the edges really nice and sharp. And um, if, uh, for example, let's just turn this off, go back to our edge and turn the creasing down to zero. And then let's try this again. Now, of course, you're getting what we kind of had in ZBrush whenever you'd use the default behavior. So we want those edges creased. But the problem is, is whenever you send an asset over from uh, Max, ZBrush doesn't respect the creasing. Maya does respect the creasing. So Maya users out there, I'll show you how you can do that in a minute. But a way to get around that in Max is go ahead and you've got your edges selected like that. You've confirmed that they're creased. Add a Turbo Smooth on top, which respects the Max creasing. And I usually just add a couple subdivisions like this. So now we have two. And then I'll just collapse that down. So now technically, you know, we have a highly subdivided um, curved shape, which in theory, now if we were at a smooth on top of this and then another one, we still retain the sharp edges pretty much. I mean, maybe we should have done one more turbo smooth. And here's the uh, same asset that we were just using in ZBrush. So now if we use the default setting, since we've already subdivided a few times to make a sharper edge, now we can divide and go up pretty high. And we still have sharp edges around the sides uh, and then we have the nice smooth topology around the edge here that was getting faceted earlier. Yep, and that's a good work though. So let me show you really quick how you can actually retain um, creasing to make this even better for you uh, straight out of Maya. All right, so I'm gonna show you how we can do this in Maya as well. I'm still in uh, Max 2015 right now, but for those of you that don't know how Synergy works, in case you happen to have Max 2015 and Maya 2015. It's just a cool little bonus thing that would be fun for you to know. Uh, if you just come here and you say send to, you can say send to Maya. You can't really see this off the screen. It's saying send as a new scene, update a current scene, etc. So I'm going to say send as a new scene. And then now within Maya, um, you can see that my object is right in here. So this is pretty sweet that you can just send things back and forth. And it even respects uh, the layers and uh, colors, all sorts of stuff. So um, what we can do in here is we can set the edge creasing similar to what we did in Max. I'm just going to go through and um, double click each of these lines so we can get all of our border edges again. And honestly, this would be like the ideal workflow to use when you're in ZBrush and you'll see why. So if you press, I think it's uh, shift and then right click. So shift on your keyboard and then right click and you come down here to the crease tool. Just use this, you'll see your cursor change. And now just middle mouse drag, up or down. So when you see it uh, get thick, that means that the edge is creased and then if you turn it back this way, it's not creased anymore. So let's keep this creased. And now we can use the Go Z feature underneath the Go ZBrush tab. This should be installed whenever you run uh, ZBrush. It just natively goes in here, but let's click that. We'll send that over to ZBrush. And now if I press Shift F, sorry, let's get this uh, centered in my scene first. Pressing Shift F, you'll notice that now it looks like we actually have additional topology here on the edge. And that's not the case. It's just because we have edge creasing on. So now, because ZBrush respects the edge creasing from Maya, I'm not sure why it doesn't from Max. It'd be awesome if the ZBrush guys are watching this, please add that feature. Um, now if we come in and divide this, uh, you'll see that we're getting 
the edge staying really, really tight. And then also too, we're getting the really nice smoothing here opposed to the faceting that we were getting from 3D Studio Max whenever we would do the divide without the smooth turned on. Now, if you wanted this to get a little soft around the edge, uh, which we're obviously going to do eventually, I'm just going to subdivide this one more time, making sure that smooth is on so at least it smooths these areas out while it keeps the edges tight. If you come down here underneath crease, whenever you're ready to do some subdivisions and then get this a little softer so it'll get that nice bevel and highlight, just come underneath here and just say uncrease all. And uh, now, for example, let's just undo that. So you see this, this is a representation of our crease. Now we say uncrease all and you can see that that goes away. Shift F again to hide that. And now if I divide this with the smooth on, you'll see that it does kind of more the traditional uh, part where it softens out the edge. So in my opinion, I might even do this whenever I'm working with my shield. Um, I may send this over to Maya and then everything this way. Um, instead of just doing it out of Mac since it supports this workflow. So anyways, these are good things for you guys to think about whenever you're working with your assets. And the reason I do this is just to keep the topology as nice and even as possible throughout the entire asset because I don't like to get weird pinching or distortion around edges that have really dense topology. And in a lot of professional work environments, game studios, uh, CG studios, it's a really good method to use just to keep things as clean as possible. And uh, there's actually a pretty good resource in the Z classroom from a Naughty Dog artist that I learned some of this from, and they actually show you too how you can use the creasing tools within ZBrush um, in here so that you can work straight out of ZBrush for those of you guys that only use ZBrush. So I'll, I'll see if I can find that really quick. But otherwise, now you can kind of see how my workflow is and why I'm going to continue setting up my assets within Max so that they're usually not chambered on the edges. Uh, the video I was talking about, if you go to ZBrush Central, so ZBrushCentral.com, go here, and then go to Gallery, and there was an old post in here from Naughty Dog, I think it might be on page two or three, depending on whenever you watch this video, it might even be in a, uh, a later date, so you just kind of have to search through here, it depends, Here's a, here it is, basically you want to find this one, the one with the little dude from Game of Thrones, so click on this. And then in here there's some really good um, videos, so I recommend checking them all out because they're amazing. But um, this one in particular, uh, Part 2 Environment Sculpting with Brad Smith, he goes over in depth how you can use creasing um, within ZBrush and how to do it within ZBrush the, the same way. So you guys could find a lot of value in that, but all of these are really awesome. These uh, Naughty Dog guys are extremely talented.